Shall we discuss some of the less exciting but important parts of owning an RV? Namely, can you buy an RV in your business? We will knock this out before I have to go to the gym. It's a topic that I'm sure would be a lot more fun if I was in a bikini giggling about how living in a van is decreasing my carbon footprint, but here I'll show you some clavicle. <laughs> so you can get your fix. Uh, it's an awful day outside. And here, exhibit A of why I do not like solar panels on an RV. Let me show you the outside. See that sky? See that? Gray, no sun, good luck. Hope you're not trying to charge anything fast. I bought this house mostly for that pond back there. When I closed on it, I saw on my CD, it said $3,000 lot premium, waterfront property. I said, that is, that's a retention pond. The only thing I don't like about that pond is that when it gets warm out, it's sort of like a scene from the Bible. Thousands of frogs come up out of the pond and I'm the first thing that they hit and they suction their bodies to the sliding glass door. It's very confrontational and just scream bloody murder <laughs> like I owe them money. There's one of them, oh, most of them are teeny tiny like the tree frogs, but there's one of them, he's huge, he's a bullfrog and I named him Ned. And some of my security cameras are set low to the ground and Ned will park his behind right up to it and just yell uncontrollably. And every time he does, his you know little croaker here will alert my security system. So I just get these flashes on my phone and there he is just looking for a fight, just looking for a fight. Okay, owning an RV with your business, can you do it? Yes, and it's actually very easy to do except for like all the asterisks that come later. Any dealership or person or anybody will have no problem writing who's the owner and your LLC, your business name, corporation, however you're tax structured, on there and sell it to you. That part is not hard. All three of my rigs, I have the van conversion I built myself, I have the fifth wheel, and then I have the Lamborghini, which is a class B, Thor. All of them I have owned in my business. And uh, side note, every American, on this beautiful nation should own a side hustle, their own business. I don't care if you're an employee somewhere else, you should also have a side hustle with some tax beneficial structure to it because otherwise you are just working to be taxed. And as an employee with a W-2, you have no control over your tax rate. And ironically, the more money you make, the more we're gonna tax you and we appreciate you paying your... So uh, yeah, I just think everybody should have some kind of side hustle that is set up so that you can take deductions. Uh, side note to that, I am not an accountant <laughs> and you really shouldn't be taking financial advice in full from anyone on the internet. So this is just a discussion and really you're supposed to bounce it off your accountant. So all the disclaimers right there. Okay, why would you want your business to own your RV? Well, for the obvious reason is that there's there's tax benefit there. You can take parts of it as a tax deduction, which lowers your overall taxable income. And with a completely emboldened IRS who is dipping their grubby little hands into your Venmo accounts and into waitresses tips, uh, why wouldn't you? Of course you would want to. A lot of benefit there. Can you buy it under your LLC and then slap your company name as a logo on it and then go off for family vacations? Absolutely not and know that you are not the first person to come up with that. In fact, the actual purchase of an RV under your business is probably gonna red flag you all day long. As long as you have a justifiable reason and you can prove it, you're fine. Plenty of companies own all different kinds of vehicles, but <laughs> you just, just don't think that you're the first person to ever think of this. The first problem you're gonna have is chances are it will void your warranty. And it's in there in the fine print that nobody reads in your warranty when you buy a rig that if you purchase it as a business in your LLC that they can either severely restrict what they are liable for or that you can't sue them if there are defects and or it's just totally void from the start. And I wouldn't really sweat that too much because the strict majority of warranties are garbage. The best warranty you can have is a great mechanic who you have a wonderful relationship with and, and that's, that's the only service plan you actually need.
Uh, people buy all kinds of warranties for these things. The problem with that is that nobody wants to do warranty work because a mechanic knows that if he does warranty work, he's gonna have to file the warranty paperwork and wait to get paid. It's gonna take forever. If you're someone who has cash and is ready to pay right now, they're gonna come service you a lot faster. And if you're on the road, <laughs> this will not matter to you. You just want to get back on the road. So I really wouldn't I really wouldn't worry about that too much, but just know that it's probably gonna happen if you buy an RV in your business name. What are the specific deductions and benefits? Well, that's gonna depend on a lot of things, including your state's tax structure, but you can deduct a portion of the RV. Now know this, when you buy any kind of vehicle, um, you'll notice that real estate agents and construction people, they tend to get new cars every year and it's because of, of this very deduction. It's because it's a business expense. You can deduct the entire price off of your taxes. That would be nice. If that was the case, I'd be buying class A's left and right and just keeping them like lawn ornaments for all the frogs in the back. But that's not how it works. It's actually a percentage, but there's still a tax benefit there. You can deduct some business expenses that are associated with the RV. What's your maintenance, your fuel? Um, did you put equipment on it that you need for the business? You might be able to deduct your sales tax if you live in a state that charges sales tax. You can deduct depreciation. I mean, there's all kinds of deductions that are associated with, and that's why people want to do this. Your next challenge is, can you prove it? So you have to have a viable story for how your business is related to owning an RV. So for example, let's say that you're a contractor and you travel a lot out of state or at a distance. And when you visit clients at site, you would have to stay in a hotel. Well, the RV could supplant that. So that makes sense. Real estate agents. Well, we all have offices, but frankly, it's not 1992 anymore and buyers, sellers, and real estate agents, nobody goes to the office anymore. So all these real estate companies have very expensive, very fancy offices with everyone has a Keurig and nobody uses them. So that was how this RV, the Lamborghini, got started as a real estate office was because I have to drive to my client's site, to their homes all day, every day, sometimes at a distance because I can sell anywhere in North Carolina and I can partner with agents in other states to sell really anywhere in the country. And sometimes if I have a listing that's three hours away, well, I really don't wanna drive six hours in a day. So my office has been essentially my truck. So now the Lamborghini will be my mobile office. I also travel extensively to shoot videos for companies, the USDA and the Forest Service. Those all require hotel stays. It's a lot easier for me if I can throw my camera gear in the Lamborghini, drive to site, shoot the video, edit in my office in my Lamborghini, and then go home. So I have a very easy to verify an obvious story about the relationship between the work I do and having the RV. So you will need that. <laughs> Just that's the most obvious thing. The other ways that you sort of prove the relationship between the need of a vehicle and your business is mileage. So I use Mile IQ, which is an app. It costs about $60 a year. That's a business expense that you can take off of your LLC as a deductible expense. And it's sort of like Tinder for business people not nearly that exciting, no clavicle. <laughs> but every time you finish driving, it will pop up on the screen and it will say, Mile IQ, we just caught your 13.5 mile drive. Is it business or personal? You swipe left if it's a personal drive, you swipe right if it's a business drive. At the end of the year, I have this beautiful printout that I can give to my accountant and it shows how much I drove for business. Well, the IRS will probably, no, they will want to see some kind of mileage log for that RV. If you have, where's one of my many scraps of paper, standby. You know, if you just have a notebook and you write down your mileage, like, okay, but it's much better if you can show that you've been tracking different mileages, different cars, and you've done it like a real live business person. The biggest problem to all this, and I have gone through it three times, is insuring it. Again, it is not hard to title a vehicle in your business name. Insuring it is a nightmare. If it's a viable business purchase, you're actually gonna be using it for business, then it's a commercial vehicle with a commercial policy and your insu insurance goes through the commercial roof. I got quotes as high as like $4,000 a year and nobody would touch it of like the regular carriers. 
progressive uh, farmers, Sam's, is it Sam's? Good Sam's. Nobody would touch it if it was for commercial purposes. And the big thing was, is my logo gonna be on it? And then oddly enough, the question that they all asked that canceled me out of any kind of insurance for the, you know, the main car carriers was, is someone else gonna be in the vehicle? I said, well, it's an RV, so chances are. I'm a real estate agent. People get in and out of my vehicles all the time. That was the nail in the coffin. The second I said that there were gonna be other people in the RV, they would not write the policy. So I had to go look for a commercial policy and I had the hardest time finding one. It got to the point where I thought, I'm not gonna be able to do this. And it was the nature of my business. Where Was I gonna be transporting people in that RV? And was I going to wrap it? Now I did not wrap the war wagon or the babe bus. They were mobile video studios, but this, the real estate thing, oh, they got all hot and bothered about that. Finally, when I was ready to give up, um, I got advice actually from Good Sam Insurance and they said, call a local agent and make them do all the work. And sure enough, I called a local insurance agent and I told him what the deal was. And I said, you're my last hope. I need you, I'm, there absolutely will be people in it. I'm absolutely gonna be putting it all over social media. I'm absolutely gonna be wrapping it and here's my business. And he found a policy, I think I ended up paying about 15, 15 or $1,700 a year, which is a business expense uh, for my insurance policy. So know that if you go down this road and you are going to be using it for business or however you're gonna feng shui this, you're gonna be paying a lot more for insurance. So the main tips to this are, just make sure that the benefit is actually there to try to go through all these hoops just to have the deduction and then you know you got to hide it or you're actually using it for personal reasons i think it's going to be way more hassle than it's really worth number one please for the love of god have a cpa there are certain things that people just do not want to pay for the help on selling their home doing their taxes there are so many quirks in the tax code and the tax code is constantly changing. And especially if you have your own business, you can't possibly, you should be doing your business. You should be spending your time doing the things in your business that you're really great at and generating more business. Not all the behind the scenes stuff that you could pay somebody else to be doing. It's just not worth your time. Have a CPA. Before I do anything, I ask my CPA, can I deduct this on my business? Are there any possible headaches that this might cause and how much of a tax benefit is it going to be? So for example, when I bought that nice couple who bought a farm, when I bought them two goats as a closing gift and I tried to write it off on my taxes as a business expense, he had some issues with that. I had a good story though, it was a client gift. I think we can only deduct a portion of one goat, like from the knees down, that was it. But I already told my accountant before the Lamborghini ever came to be what it was gonna be used for and how much of a tax benefit and it made sense. But he knew before I even bought it what was coming down on his desk. So please get a CPA. These free services, unless you're a W-2 employee and you can just plug it in, there's just, they're just way too complicated, way too complicated. And if you are really going to use it for business purposes, Again, I am not an accountant. I do not give tax advice, but I will say, please get an LLC. So many people who are running their own contractor business or just really any business, they become sole proprietors. There are so many different tax structures for a business, but most people become sole proprietors first. And they do that because it costs like $250 a year to become an LLC. And LLCs can be tax structured all different kinds of ways. But the reason, both of them can qualify for business deductions, so that's not a problem. But the LLC, the Limited Liability Corporation, separates the business from you. So if somebody sues you, they're gonna have a much harder time getting your home, your personal assets coming after you. They can come after the business. And when you are driving large vehicles, I'm always on the road for video or real estate, you just, that $250, it is not worth putting everything you have to your name on the line because you didn't want to pay $250 for an LLC. You do not need to pay somebody to write up your LLC. Chances are you go on your Secretary of State's website and you fill out a form and you pay them the money and you have an LLC. And there's just so many benefits to doing that than being out there 
flap it in the wind because you wanted to save a couple pennies. So that's the deal for buying an RV with your business. Just think a couple steps ahead. Don't be an idiot. You know, get the tax deduction, but like also don't get yourself audited. And here's some clavicle for the road.